Hi, Mike DeFeo here, and this is part two of my little demo on the eye and how to sculpt it. Uh, since I'm in Florence, I figured I would do a little sculpt demo using the David eye. And this, uh, what you see here, is my David Plasters app. And uh, I'm just going to kind of go through this movie that I already made, and I compressed it down to about five minutes. So here you can see the app, and I'm looking at the model that I've made here. For reference, uh, one thing you can note is that on this uh, app, you can turn these little maps on and off, but these are the regions we're going to look for. These are sort of recurring forms on uh, a human face, the brow bone area, the skin right above the eyelid, the eyelid, lower lid, uh, the little ramp leading up to the nose, the eye bag. And so here I'm starting with a sphere. Then I duplicate the sphere and make a hemisphere a little bit larger. And I duplicate that and flip it. And now I'm centering the uh, cursor here on the sphere. So I've got the, uh, previously I, I had the, let's see if we can go back. All right, so I have the sphere selected right here. And I'm centering my uh, transpose line using that little white circle on the end, and that centers it right in the center of the selected object, which is the eyeball. Uh, then I switch to the hemisphere, and when I rotate it, it rotates exactly around the sphere. So then I try to do a little bit of scaling. I want to make the upper lid a little bit bigger than the lower lid, and I get a fourth object, duplicate the eyeball basically, and I start to stretch that out to create what's going to be the skin area. So I took the uh, David Plaster and I started to figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm pulling out a nose, I'm expanding the brow region and the cheekbone, and then I start tucking in the inner corner and outer corner and do a bit of smoothing, uh, tucking that inner corner and now pulling the brow out a bit more, a little more cheekbone. Uh, now I'm starting to tuck in the eye socket. And you'll see I do a little bit of adjustment to the lids. I want to make it a little bit thicker. Then here I start to pull the corner, the anatomy, uh, out a little bit. Tuck it in. And drop down some resolution to smooth it. Pull the outer corner out and let it slope into the head. Tuck that uh, inner corner in again. A little smoothing. And try to keep those curves nice and clean. Uh, then I switch to the lower lid and start to tuck it into place, pulling the uh, inner corner in place for the anatomy. Tweak the eyeball size a little bit. Then I start to shape the, the lids. Again, looking at my David Plaster's reference uh, and shaping the lower lid. And I also want to pull that upper lid a little bit in front of the lower lid. Now we start to uh, put in the Landmarks, I put in the brow ridge, get a form in place there, outline it so you can kind of see where it's going to be, and then smooth, cutting in the inner corner a bit. Now I shape that uh, skin above the upper lid. Remember that it's always going to be uh, convex, not concave, uh, above the eye. Do a little more shaping of the brow right above the nose. Now you want to uh, I want to open that space up a little bit more so I have a little more room to make a, uh, a brow. Again, reshaping the brow form, filling it in. And you can see I kind of outline the form and then fill it in. I work that way a lot. It helps me really sort of control the shape. And here, putting in a little bit of an eye bag uh, form, bulking up the cheekbone a little bit. Then I put in a little more of an eye bag, which you would see definitely on an older person. I go to my reference and realize I don't need that much. So I take it out. And now I'm shaping the lower lid a little more, giving it a nice curvature, going back to my reference. And there's a nice feature on that uh, David Plaster and the uh, Le Crochet app where you can keep it on top of ZBrush. So it doesn't keep going away. So now I'm looking at massing out that form, uh, the cheekbone, the, the brow ridge, and the nose. Again, starting to fill in that, that form above the 
above the brow and the brow ridge itself. Starting to fill in some mass below the lid, the areas of the nose. And now I start to shape the general form of that to make it feel a little more like my reference. And at this point I've uh, dynameshed it to kind of smooth it out a little so I can get better, a better result, a little more shaping on the lid itself. And then I dynamesh uh, the lid again, to or the form again, to kind of give me a little more smoothness so I can work it. Again, shaping out and uh, delineating all these forms that you see here. Again, the brow region, the actual ridge of the uh, brow, the area above the lid, and this depression inside. And again, none of these are really actually convex, like hollow bowl shapes, but a series of little, um, or I should say they're not concave, they are convex, a series of little convex forms that, that can merge to look like an actual concave shape. So I'm trying to form all these out. I'm outlining them, and then I come in and actually fill them in. And doing some smoothing. And at this point, I dynamesh the lids into that head form, and I start to do the anatomy of the of the eyelid uh, uh, tear duct area. So the whole point is, I started with a, a hemisphere to create a nice even thickness, pulled those corners out to create the overlap, the upper lid overlapping the lower lid, and in in this case, I uh, am, am manually sculpting this anatomy in here which is really basically a, a half a donut, sort of a horseshoe. I'm filling that in, carve it back a little bit, put a little bit of the tear duct in, and smooth it. Uh, this is a demo, and uh, not to make excuses, but it's only about like uh, 20 or 30 minutes of work, and I, I just wanted to get the forms going. Of course, I would take more time to really match the uh, reference, if that's what I wanted to do. But there it is, that's uh, a very quick sped up version of how to create an eye, one of many ways to do it. But, uh, and again, this is a, a more realistic eye if you were doing a more stylized, like, let's say animation character. You might not put all this extra anatomy in here, obviously, but keep in mind to have a nice thickness of the lid. The conversion here, I should say the, the transition of the plane of the top of the lid itself as it rolls under to the front surface. These kind of forms are really uh, important. So hopefully that was helpful and thanks for watching.